The third issue is the situation in Rakhine State. The arrival of a new government is an opportunity to break from the tragic, tragic status quo. I am aware of the complexity of the issues at stake and the severe underdevelopment affecting all communities in the state. But development efforts alone will not be enough. Concrete actions must be taken rapidly to address the structural dimensions that lead to the serious human rights concerns on the ground. Allow me to briefly illustrate what it is like if you are a Rohingya Muslim living in Rakhine State. Your travel is restricted within and between townships and you need specific authorization to travel outside the state. If you are ill and require urgent treatment, you might not be granted access to the nearest hospital and might have to travel a few hours to reach the Sitwe General Hospital. If you live in northern Rakhine State and have more than two children, they risk being unregistered as blacklisted. If you are a Rohingya, you're almost most probably stateless without even the temporary documentation that you had, had until last year and your children will not be allowed to enter Sitwe University. If you are one of the estimated 140,000 individuals in IDP camps since 2012, you probably living a longhouse on the verge of collapse as it was initially built to last two to three years for temporary shelter. Turning around this situation will be a significant challenge for the new government and may not be popular, but action must be taken and the international community can provide support. One key priority is the lifting of the restrictions on the freedom of movement. These restrictions have not only a knock-on knock effect on a host of other rights, such as the right to health and the right to education, but also hamper interactions with, between Rakhine and Muslim communities. How can you expect communities to, to recreate bonds if they continue to be segregated? Lifting ongoing restrictions would be an important structural change but steps must also be taken to win hearts and minds. There are currently opposing forces at play in Rakhine. On the one hand, radical voices are inciting the population against Muslim communities in the most disturbing ways. On the other hand, outstanding groups and individuals continue to work tirelessly to promote tolerance and understanding between the Buddhist and Muslim communities. I encourage the new government to take steps towards the criminalization of incitement to hatred, which crosses a clearly defined multi-step threshold. At the same time, it should prioritize and expand ongoing preventive, educational, and awareness raising measures. There are more than a million Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar deprived of some of their most fundamental rights. This is a million too many.